What's up guys? My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money and make more money all while bettering yourself every single day so you can live life on your own terms. Something I talk about a lot on this channel is investing in the stock market because if you do it right, you can change your entire financial future. I'm talking about a future where you can have exactly what you deserve, where you can build wealth and enjoy the fruits of your labor without ever having to stress about money. But the ironic thing is investing can be so intimidating and stressful that it scares people away sometimes. And I know because when I finally got to a place in my life where I could invest a good amount of money in the stock market every month, I didn't. And it was because I had my own ideas and misconceptions about the stock market and that messed with my earning potential. So I want to tell you about the mistakes a ton of beginner investors make that end up costing them money. And I made these mistakes myself, so I also have the solution for these to hopefully help you out on your investing journey. So the biggest thing I've noticed about investing is you have to be mentally prepared for it. The stock market is a literal roller coaster that fluctuates all the time, and because there's so much going on, it can get very overwhelming. So this intimidates beginners right off the bat, and since they don't have the mental preparation for these constant ups and downs, they make one of two mistakes. So the first mistake is they'll buy a stock and they'll see it going down in value and it might stay down for a week maybe two let's say you buy a stock for a hundred dollars and it goes down to 80 then you look the next day and then it goes down to 75. you might just say screw it and pull your money out before it goes down to 50. seems logical right but what a lot of people don't realize is you don't actually lose money in the stock market until you sell a stock that has already went down in value and here's the case in point why you would be losing money by doing that so let's say you've sold your stock at 75 dollars so now let's say three weeks have gone by and the stock is up to $110. You bought it for $100. You sold it at $75. And now it's back up to 110. You would have gained $10, but instead you got impatient, you sold it, so now you lost $25. You don't actually lose money in the stock market until you sell a stock that has already went down in value. On the other hand, the second mistake you could make is actually worse than the first one. And that's choosing not to invest at all because you fear losing money. The ironic thing about this is the fear of losing money can be costing you money that you could be earning in the stock market. That was me. And the main reason this is worse than the first mistake is because when you choose not to invest at all, you're not gaining experience, so you're not learning anything through application. Then you end up missing out on money that would have otherwise multiplied throughout the years for you. And it doesn't help when everywhere you look, someone is trying to predict the next stock market crash, which by the way can cause a huge ripple effect if it gets hyped up enough. It can freak people out and then everyone gets together and they sell all their stocks, which then lowers the value of the stock. Like I said, the fear of losing money leads to losing money. And another thing I realized about the stock market is it's not something that you can just copy and paste. You might be a beginner investor who seeks guidance, so you might want to take some steps to gain an understanding of what stocks you're about to be getting yourself into. Makes perfect sense. So you might go to your favorite personal finance YouTuber who may have hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of dollars in the stock market, and you go to their channel and you look at their videos. Then you watch these videos just to see what they're invested in. So you can invest in the same thing because you think you might get similar results. And I'm gonna tell you, some of these guys have gotten great results. So you see this impressive growth, right? And you're like, cool, I can just invest in the same exact stocks they're invested in. That way, I don't even have to do any research on any of these stocks. Look, Nate O'Brien, Graham Stephan, and Andre Jack, they all invested in these stocks. You know what? I'm gonna do it too. That's what you tell yourself, and it sounds like a logical decision. It really does. But I'm gonna tell you why that's a big mistake. These guys have been investing for a while, so they know what they're doing. They've done the research. They've done the work. They've even put out investment advice videos. And what a lot of beginner investors don't realize is you can have the same exact stocks I have and still lose money in the stock market while mine gains money. That's because you have no idea when I got into that stock. You see, stocks have different price points at different times. I could recommend Microsoft all day because I absolutely love that stock and I really would recommend it. But here's the thing. I got it when it was way cheaper than it is right now. It is now over $300. And even last year, the Microsoft stock was a lot cheaper than it is right now. It was about $270 last year, and it's now $300 plus. So I bought a few shares of Microsoft last year for $270 per share. But if you buy Microsoft right now at $300 and it goes down to $285, I'm still up $15. But you, you're down $25. So imagine mimicking someone else's stock portfolio, but you buy all the same stocks that they have at their highest price point. Or even if it's just at a 52-week high and then watching the price plummet right after you buy it. 
just happens, bro. That's why it's so important to look at where a stock is right now compared to where it has been in the past few years. Because as a beginner investor, if you mess around and buy 10 or 20 Microsoft stocks and it's at the highest price it's been in a while, what goes up must come down, bro. So you gotta be careful with that. That's why it's important to research good entry points to get into a stock or even looking at dollar cost averaging. Because what some stocks tend to do is go up slowly and then boom, at some point they just randomly peak. And the funny thing is, once that stock price peaks, now everybody wants that stock. They think because it grew 200% in the past five years that they'll buy it right now and it'll grow another 200%. It doesn't work that way. Then when you buy a stock at its peak and it drops 15%, you're gonna have that sudden urge to sell your stock so you can save your money. But don't act on that urge, bro. Well, let me put it this way. It's not always wise to act on that urge. In my opinion, the best way to deal with the stock dropping in price is by looking at it differently. And the way I look at it is this. Based on my past experience and knowledge of this stock, how much faith do I have in the company? How often am I using products from this company? I mean, really think about it. Not just in your personal life, even at work. I guarantee you at your job, it is dominated by Microsoft and Apple products. So if the Apple stock price drops, I can't sit here and freak out because I know at the time of this recording, Apple recently just hit their all time high. So it's bound to go down anyway. Here's the thing, if it decides to drop by a lot, that's a great time to buy more. Why? Because it goes back to what I was just telling you about buying them at different price points. The cheaper you buy it, and then the more it grows over the course of time, the more money you end up making. So if the stock market crashed today and Apple's price just plummeted down to like $100 or less, you best believe I would put all kinds of money into Apple because I know the nature of that stock. So if Apple dropped to $100 today, I would buy a bunch more because I know that if in a year it goes up to $250, I'm looking good. I'm up $150. But unfortunately, a lot of beginners don't think of it that way. So I'm going to paint a picture for you. Just think. If you had invested in Apple back in 2018, you would have spent around $55 for it. It is now worth over 150 at the time of this recording. You'd be up $100 per share. Now imagine buying 20 shares of Apple per year from 2018 up until now. Bro, your portfolio would be looking so good, it wouldn't matter what kind of day you were having because you could have a bad day and then all you gotta do is look at your portfolio. It'll cheer you right on up. That's how good your portfolio would be looking, bro. But that's why you gotta do your own research. Not enough beginners do their own research. This is the mistake that leads to a ton of other mistakes that are costing you money. I've definitely done it a few times where I put money into a stock just because I felt like it was a good company, but I lost money that way because I didn't realize that there's a lot that goes into investing and there's so much that you're probably not even thinking about. When you're scrolling through stocks and you see names like Tesla and you hear stories about how it jumped hundreds and hundreds of dollars last year, and then you see PayPal and Lowe's and all these companies that you're definitely familiar with. You know, you see Coca-Cola, then you see McDonald's and you see Walmart. And then it's like, it makes your eyes get big. And that's the moment where your eyes get bigger than your wallet. Now you have stocks in your portfolio that you aren't prepared for because you don't know the nature of those stocks yet. You see, some stocks behave differently than others. Some pay dividends while some don't. Some grow significantly faster than others and some are just completely out of control while some barely move at all. So when you buy a bunch of stocks at once and you don't really know what to expect, this is what you get. A bunch of stocks that just act differently and it is very difficult to deal with mentally. Which is why it's actually a mistake to buy too many different stocks. And you may hear some generic investing advice that says diversify your portfolio, which is basically saying to buy different types of stocks so whenever one type of stock is falling, the others are still going up. That way it minimizes risk and it balances out your portfolio so it doesn't hurt you as much when certain stocks start to take a hit. And it makes sense to do this a really good idea. The thing is, a lot of beginner investors take this out of context and over diversify. And this is a big problem because before you know it, you'll own over 35 different companies. And when you have that much going on in your stock portfolio, it increases the chances that you'll have certain stocks underperform. So even if you have a couple of stocks that are doubling in their price, you could have other ones dragging them behind. And that's not good because that means stocks can hold your entire portfolio back. You could have Apple doubling in price, but then you might have another stock within that portfolio that's like going negative 30%. And that could be the difference between a portfolio gaining 3% per year on average compared to what could have been a 12% per year return. Not good, bro. 
And I have literally done this before. I even have a YouTube video showing you guys about how diversified my portfolio is. I had well over 40 different positions in my investment portfolio. And at the time I was only getting around a 6% return per year. But as soon as I changed my investing strategy, it went from 6% to 16%. I'm just telling you what I know. And the second reason this is a mistake is an even more disappointing one than the first one. When you have that many positions, I'm talking 35 or more in your investment portfolio, you're pretty much creating your own fund. And there's a ton of different types of funds we can talk about, but I'll talk about one that's specific to what this example is about, and that's ETFs. If you don't know what an ETF is, it stands for Exchange Traded Fund. It's a fund that has a bunch of different stocks in it, like very big companies that have been thriving for a long time. There's a bunch of different ones for different sectors. There's one for tech sectors. There's one for the S&P 500. There's a lot of them. And a lot of these ETFs have huge companies in there that have been thriving for a very long time. So just imagine having all these companies, these big corporate giants, I'm talking Microsoft, Apple, stuff like that, and putting them into a basket full of stocks. That's your ETF. These have historically performed well and they can give you an eight to 10% return on average. But of course, not all ETFs are the same and not all of them are gonna give you the same return. So you'll have to do your own research with that. So where I'm going with that is if you go ahead and make your own fund by having so many different stocks within your portfolio, you're probably not going to get the eight to 10% that you could just get by getting an ETF. Because you got to think, ETFs are created with a great amount of intelligence and a lot of thought goes into them and they have top of the line companies and a lot of the mimic indexes that have withstood the test of time. So if you're telling me that you can pick 35 plus different companies and do research on all of them and know exactly what they're going to do and be able to keep track of all of it and still get a higher percentage than an ETF, you let me know. But most of us can't do that. Even experts and people who are in the industry can't do that. So you risk spending more money and still getting less returns. Not worth it. So if you're going to go that route, it's better to just do research on ETFs that perform well and then invest in those. And you know what? That's another point I want to bring up. There are so many different ways to invest. So throughout this entire video, I've been talking about individual stock investing. I've also brought up ETFs, but there's even more that I want to go over real quick. In addition to ETFs, there's also mutual funds and index funds, which all three of them are pretty similar, but they have some differences. You know, there's 401ks, Roth IRAs. There are so many different ways to invest but you won't find a lot of people who have Roth IRAs in addition to their 401ks, in addition to individual stocks. And it'll be insanely rare to find someone with all three of those plus an index fund. So if you're able to invest your money in these different ways and you do the research and you apply what you learn correctly, your money will stack up. What this boils down to is consistently investing, consistently learning and letting your money stack up and compound year after year. And you do this without getting emotional when your stocks start to drop in value and actually being in there for the long haul. Because let me tell you something. The first mistake that I talked about in this video is a very real one, not being mentally prepared. This is not a short term hobby. This is a long term investment. And see, a lot of beginner investors don't hold on to stocks long enough to see the returns that they've been wanting. And it's something that's hard to wrap your head around. I'll admit that it is. But a bad year can happen. You can hold on to a stock and all year, the whole year is either having extremely low returns or even worse, it's losing you money. It might not even be moving at all. But five years later, it could double in price out of nowhere. That's why you got to do your research. And you know what? Holding on to stocks for a generation is the ideal amount of time you need to hold them to see those returns that you've been looking for. I know that sounds like a long time, man, but realistically, it's only 20 years. That's how long a generation is. Like I said, this isn't a short term hobby. If you take the time to actually do your own research, if you actually assess how the stock market works, how it performs, and you really get an understanding of how this thing works, and you hold on to a few stocks that you know, and you trust, and you believe in, that you've done your absolute best research on, I mean, you understand the company, you understand where it's going and what the future holds for that company, what their future plans are, and you invest every month consistently, you can stack up some serious money. Trust me, bro. But you know what? Fact check me by doing your own research. I just want to be clear with you about something. These are just some of the big concepts and ideas that I wish I knew about investing from day one. I could give you a bunch of other investment mistakes, but these are some of the ones that I haven't heard anyone really talk about on YouTube. 
And I'm going to leave you with this because I know you got to go and I got to go too. I got to edit this video. As you go throughout your investing journey, always learn. That's something that cannot stop. You must always keep learning, feeding yourself new information, understanding these concepts. There's a lot to the stock market and it doesn't hurt to keep learning about it and learning about the companies that you're invested in and learning about different strategies and methods of how to do. And even though I can't legally give you financial advice, I wanna say something openly. You can do what you wanna do. I'm, like I said, I'm not an expert, but I will always say this. It's not wise to spend money that you don't have on investments in hopes that it's gonna just grow your money. Because when a lot of people do that, what happens is the opposite of what they're hoping happens. So I will stand by this forever. Only invest what you can afford to lose. But anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. If you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. See you next time. Stay cold.